Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Ryan with Degenerate Passive Income coming to you on a beautiful Tuesday evening, March 28th, 2023. I'm in the beautiful Grand Cayman Islands at the Marriott Resort right on the beach. It's been an amazing time. We're gonna go to Costa Rica after this and then probably Jamaica and then back home. I don't really wanna go home back to Minnesota, but you know, it is what it is. Gotta pay the bills, right? So, this video might be a little lengthy, but I get so many questions and DMs and about Ryan, how did you get where you're at at your age? Okay, so first off, I'm 47. Just turned 47 a few weeks ago. So, I thought I'd make a little video explaining how I got here and how I've become successful in my opinion. Maybe not other people's, but mine, okay? So, I might preach a little bit in this video, so excuse me for that, but I have my own opinions and I voice them once in a while. So sorry about that if you take offense, but that's just the way it is, all right? So, we need to start from scratch. All right, I was born in 1976 in Northern Minnesota to, you know, not a low income family, but we did, they did okay, my parents. I'm the youngest of three brothers. Okay, so there's five in our family. I'm 47, the other one's 50, and the other one's 53, okay? My middle brother is a lawyer in California, and my oldest brother lives about a half an hour away from me, and he's got a turkey farm, all right? So, I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth, like some other people, and if you were, it's okay. It's not your fault, right? We were a middle-income family growing up. My dad was a teacher, and then he became successful later on in life doing some trading, and he's part owner in this turkey farm. Now he's 73, retired, lives in Arizona in the winter. They're okay. My mom, she was, you know, had a $16 an hour job for her whole life at working at a clinic, being a, kind of a paraprofessional, working in the insurance department. So we didn't have a lot of extra growing up. But now they're, you know, later in life, they did well for themselves and good for them. They brought us up with uh, good morals, good values, and uh, I appreciate that. So I love you, Mom and Dad, if you're watching. And thank you for everything that you've done for us as a family. So we were brought up. We were taught to work hard. I remember as a kid that... We would, my dad, we had planted all these trees and they were about 100 feet away from the house, right? And this is just an example now. And we had a garden hose that would easily reach there, but he made us fill up huge milk, milk, milk barrels or milk uh, cartons and, you know, those old big tin ones, put them in a wheelbarrow and wheel them over there and water them by hand. We had a garden hose that would reach there, but... You know, and I guess maybe that's what pounded in my head, you know, to work hard. So, you know, we didn't have a lot growing up, but that didn't matter. We each made our own, went on our own journey, and all three of, three of us are successful. So, went through high school as a kid, great, you know, played some golf, played some football, you know, baseball, whatever. As a normal kid, turned 16, partied a lot. Got in a bunch of trouble, you know, nothing serious, but the usual Minnesota, northern Minnesota person, right? Not a lot to do when it's 30 blow up. So, with that said, <clears throat> I went to college. I decided I'm gonna, I need to go a trade school. I wasn't super smart. Um, I was good at math. That's the only thing I was good at was math. I was good at machining, tool and die, and I was good at welding, okay? So I decided to go to a school that was three hours away from our hometown for tool and die, which is pretty much machining. I did that for two years. I wouldn't call it a waste of my time, but you know, I didn't get in trouble much there, but you know, it was 1994, 95, 96. I did a two year stint there at, at uh, the college. Um, had a good time, had too much fun. You know, everything pretty much 
Uh, I did everything pretty much under the sun besides put a needle in my arm. All right, not super proud of that, but I turned out okay. After I did that, I went and worked at a tool and die shop about four hours away from my house. I did that for a year and a half. You know, when you go to, when you go to college, I graduated in 96. They promise you all this money. You know, oh yeah, you're gonna graduate and make 20 bucks an hour. Well, 20 bucks an hour in 1996 is good money. That's like 40 bucks an hour now, right? Well, I graduated, I made $9 an hour, okay? For a year and a half. And I was very good at my job. It was too far from home in my opinion. So I moved back home and started my own machine shop business. I had two partners. Um, we did a lot of work for, you know, my town is industry led where I live, right? Um, we kept busy and we made decent money. Uh, my two partners had a little bit of a drinking problem, so it didn't work out. We ended up selling the business, made a little profit, we got out. In that time, that was in 1999. You know, before that, in the summers, I'd worked at my uncle's tire shop where I'm from, right? He's owned it since 1981. It was started in 1956. He bought it from his dad. I'd work summers and after school every day at this tire shop making $5 to $5.50 an hour, you know, all through high school. You know, so in 99, my uncle knew I was closing um, my business. He said, why don't you come be an assistant manager for me? I'll pay you nine bucks an hour. I'm like, well, I got nothing else to do. So off I go to the Goodyear tire dealership in, in my hometown. Great, nine bucks an hour, not super sexy, right? Even in 99. So now I'm full-time there. I got married in 2000. I had a son in 2002 and a son in 2005. They are 20 and 17 now. And I'm trying to instill the same values on them as I did my parents with me. It's a little different these days because kids are different. It's too much technology. There's too much of this, too much of that. Everybody knows the story. So but they're becoming a little bit of entrepreneurs themselves. My 20, 20 year old is uh, buying his grandfather's insurance business when he graduates college this, this spring, which is in a couple months. And then my 18 year old is going to two year business degree and he's gonna join him in about three years from now. So they're gonna have their own insurance business in town. It's successful right now. I think it'll be good. So let's fast forward from 99. I worked my way all the way up at this tire store until 2014 when my uncle decided to retire okay so he sold it to me and his son okay so i had a partner which was fine all right well the partnership did not work out so i had some troubles i don't talk bad about anything he's my cousin you know we still love my family still love my relatives um he was had some spending problems so he had to be ousted out of the corporation so then in 2000 uh 2021 it was mine solely so from 14 to 21 2014 to 2021 I had a partner, 2021, it was mine. So, here I am, 2023, I'm still going. And I have a good manager, so I don't have to be there all the time. I'm still there a lot, because people still want to talk to the boss, you know, right? So I spend, you know, probably four hours a day there. And in the meantime, I've got my other things, which we're going to talk about. Um, so that's where we're at there now. I got my tire store, that is my main income, all right? Plus, in 2018, I decided to get into real estate with a partner. Our first project was a flip. We flipped a house, and we made like 25,000 in like a month, okay? Awesome, flipped the house, made 25 grand, quick cash. We used that money to buy our first apartment building that has 11 apartments in it. 
and a restaurant in my hometown because it was for sale. The guy wanted to get out of it. He was sick of it. And we pretty much got it on a fire sale. So that was my first real estate purchase. We put in that 25000 that we made off the house into that. Plus, there was uh, SBA loans and you know loans through a city that we could get for like 1% interest. That's what people don't realize. There are programs out there for real estate purchases, especially commercial, okay? So a year later, we found a property an hour and a half away. That was a 24-plex. We ended up, that was into a trust that the lawyer was bleeding dry. The owner died and the lawyer was bleeding the trust dry. And the family's like, you know what? We have to sell this thing because we're gonna end up with nothing. He wanted 350,000 bucks for it. We offered him $150,000 for a 24 unit apartment building. We got a good deal on it, all right? About 6,000 a door we paid, unbelievable. It needed some work. Fine, we did that. That's still going to this day, right? Our next deal was three months later. Another apartment building came up and that had, it was two fourplexes right in my hometown. Three, four blocks away from my original purchase. We ended up striking a deal on that one for $280,000. Once again, there was SBA loans and there was a city grant at 1% money. How can you go wrong? All I needed was a down payment, right? We ended up striking a deal on that one. So that one's still going as well. Then, December of 21, we bought a big apartment complex in my hometown that has another 24 units, 12 two bedroom, 12 three bedroom, for 1.2 million, okay? 50,000 bucks a door, it's more than we wanted to pay, but I have been looking at this building, I always told the owner, you know what? If you ever wanna sell it, give me first shot. So we came to an agreement, 1.2 million, once again, there were city grants and 1% money available for down payments and everything else. That's what people don't realize. If you look, there are programs out there where you can get into real estate and things like this for pennies on the dollar, okay? But you have to look, you have to take, you have to have some gumption to go out there and find a deal, talk to owners and just go and be like, hey, you know what? If you ever wanna sell this thing, let me know. You have to get the ball rolling and then you need to have financing done ahead of time if something comes up. Stop at a bank, talk to SBA talk to the city or the county, see if they have any programs available, right? Get things started first. That's very important. So that was our last real estate purchase. In that four years now, we flipped two more houses and made like another 60, 70,000. We try to flip one house a year, you know, because it's good money. Most of them needed minimal work and so on. So there is money to be made in real estate, but here is the things, ladies and gentlemen, all right? You are not going to get anywhere. Well, first, please go out and look for a deal. Second, have your funding available before. See what you can afford. Talk to the city, county, SBA. Get financing lined up. When the deal comes, you make a deal or if you hear about one or you go talk to the owner, okay? Secondly, repairs, okay? I... And my partner, we do all the repairs ourselves. When we bought these apartment buildings, they needed paint, they needed flooring, they needed plumbing, they needed siding, they needed roofs. We do it all, okay? So don't think you're just gonna buy up all these properties, right? And you're going to start raking in the money. You need to put in the work. So don't be lazy and you'll get somewhere. That's what drives me crazy about all these properties. Oh, I'm not making any, I said, you know why you're not making any money? because of a leaky sink or a plugged toilet, instantly they call, oh, there's a plumber, there's 300 bucks. Well, you know what, that's half month's rent, right? Down the tubes. When I can go there and take five minutes, run my snake down it or take the drain apart on the sink and unclog it and it's done, okay? So don't think you're just gonna get rich right away if you're not willing to put in the time or the effort. It's a grind, but it's worth it. I'm 47 years old, I live comfortably. 
but you're not going to get there being lazy. Painting, flooring, plumbing, if you have any kind of, you know, if you're good at any of that stuff, real estate is for you, especially multifamily housing. I love multifamily. I love a lot of doors. I have 82 apartments, nine rental houses, my Goodyear store, and of course my Bitcoin mining farm, right? If you look back at my videos, I show my Bitcoin mining farm. I got 56 S19 Pros running 24 seven. I can afford to pay the power out of my pocket so I don't cash in my Bitcoin. I just stack Satoshis every single day, waiting for the next bull run, $100,000 Bitcoin another year. Boom, there we go, we're laughing. So back to the real estate. We don't have property managers, okay? To me, property managers, all they do is suck you dry. They charge you 10 to 20% a month on each apartment. So if you have an apartment building that makes you, you know, grosses you $120,000 a year, they're taking at least 15 to $20,000 out of that. But you know what they're doing? All they're doing is showing the apartments. All they are doing is taking applications. And that's about it. If a tenant calls with a plumbing problem, all they do is call the plumber and then you get charged the plumbing fee and for them to call, to make the phone call. That's ridiculous, okay? I'm not doing that, ever. No property managers. I can do applications and showings all right on the internet. This is 2023, guys. Virtual tours, applications online, done. Background checks, done, all online, okay? Property managers, no. That's just me because I'm willing to put in the work, okay? I didn't get here being lazy. Right? I'm driven and that's how I am. So if you think you're just going to get rich off buying all these properties and not putting in the work, you're sadly mistaken. You need to put in the work. Okay? I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I worked my ass off for many, many years. I ate absolute shit until I was 35 years old. Okay? When I turned 35, I was like, you know what? It's time to change. That's when I decided, all right, here we go. I'm gonna do something for myself. And look, 12 years later, I'm in the Cayman Islands at a $500 a night hotel, drinking $15 umbrella drinks and life is good. But I didn't get here by being lazy, not sitting on the couch playing PS5, right? It's a grind, but it's worth it down the road, in my opinion. I don't wanna sound like I'm preaching, if you're one of the people working at a factory for, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour, that's great. The world needs people like that, okay? You're doing fine. That's not for me. That's not what I want. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted some financial freedom, okay? I didn't want to go and work in a factory. I didn't want to go have a boss. I had a boss, you know, for 15 years, 14 years when I worked for my uncle. That was enough. It was time for me to spread my wings, right? And I did. I'm thankful I did. I, you know, it's it's been a blessing. And I, you know, I have to thank my mom and dad again, you know, for instilling these, for instilling all this upon uh, me and my brothers. It was, uh, it was a big deal. So thank you, mom and dad, again. So don't be lazy, okay? If you want to buy properties up and hire property managers and be lazy and thinking to rake all this money in, go right ahead. You're going to go broke or you're not going to make any money. You're going to be like, what am I doing this for? You know, so we have 82 apartments, nine rental houses. We owe money on one apartment building. Okay. Everything else is paid for within four, five years. Okay. We only have one payment on the $1.2 million building that we just bought a year and a half ago. That's it. Everything else is paid for because... We don't take any money out of the real estate. Everything, every penny it's made, we have paid off because we have other jobs, right? Every single penny, we've paid everything off. Now, we're about three years away from paying off that big one. And guess what? We'll be taking in about $35,000 a month in rental income with no payments, just taxes, utilities, insurance. That's a lot of money, okay? And that's just from our real estate. I'm selling my tire business. I'll have a healthy you know, payment coming to me for the next 20 years for that because I'm selling a contract for deed because I'm not gonna pay the government. Taxes 
on that because that's a ripoff. I'm not going to lose 35% of my money working my ass off for the last 27 years at that place. No, absolutely not. I'll sell it to my trusted employee, and that's how it's going to go. That's how I bought it through my uncle, right? So I don't want to preach too much on working hard and things like that, but that's just the way it is. You know, maybe some of you have already clicked off this video already, and that's fine. I don't, I don't blame you, right? It's, it's okay. It's not for everybody. But if you want to work hard and you want it, real estate, obviously, right? Owning your own business, being an entrepreneur. You can get started, but you have to know things, right? You have to know, like I said earlier, if you want to get into real estate, talk to the city, talk to the county, talk to the SBA, see what's available for programs, zero down, zero percent down programs, and go out there and look. Go find a deal, right? Don't be lazy. So, I mean, that's that's the gist of it, guys. You know, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I am self-made. I've made my own decisions. If you ask my mom and dad, they say I work way too much. It's time for me to relax a little bit and enjoy life at 47, all right? And that's what I'm doing here in the beautiful Grand Cayman Islands, right? So, I had to thank my mom and dad for that. I just had to, I wanted to put this video out on, um, on, on my thoughts on that, because everyone wants to know, what do you do for a living? You know, how, how do you make all these investments? Where did you get the money for that? You know, that's, this is it. You know, this is, this is what it is. That's what I do. You know, but every everybody, you know, thinks that I was born in silver spoon mouth. Like I said before, I ate shit for 15 years out of college. Zero money, had two young kids, went through a divorce, everything else. Everyone knows that's expensive. So, guess what? I woke up one day, I'm like, you know what? It's time for a change. This is garbage, right? So here's where I'm at. 47 years old, successful, living life, having some fun here with you guys. I started my YouTube channel. Um, anybody knows Jonathan from the FUD Farm? He's a good friend of mine. I host some Bitcoin miners for him. He's the one, I took his YouTube course. He's the one who got me in this. I started watching his channel about a year and a half ago. And I said, I want to be like that guy. So, I did. I don't have his following, you know? He does a lot better job at it than I do because he's a professional marketer. I am not. I'm just, you know, I'm just me. I tell it the way it is. I give my opinions because I don't care. You know, I didn't get to where I'm at today without hurting some feelings and making a bunch of friends, all right? That's not how business works. So, you know, I don't want to go on a tangent on that stuff, all right? You know, customer service has always been number one. That's what I, we are known for in our tire shop and our rentals. Our rentals aren't, you know, they're nothing super fancy. It's roof overhead, the heat works, the air conditioning works. You know, it's going to have new paint. It's not going to be anything super, you know, there's no granite. There's no walk-in showers. You know, there's nothing. It's for middle-income families with kids in a town of 3,000 people. And that's just the way it is. You want to go and spend high money, and that's another thing with property owners. They think they're gonna get all, you know, all this much more rent for making their apartments. Oh, that needs granite. We got to put in tile floors, and no, you know, what you do. You put in the 50 cent square foot of snap block plank board in, and you put it in yourself. You spend an afternoon, and you floor the whole apartment in that, and it costs you about 600 bucks. You know and you're done in an afternoon. That's what you do. Put your trim back on, done. That's what we do. Throw a coat of paint on it, one day, done. Two days, we can turn over a whole apartment from paint to flooring, done. And it looks like brand new, right? So, I mean, that's, that's what I do. I've got my tire shop, I've got my real estate, like I said, 82 apartments, nine rental houses. I've got the Bitcoin mining farm, and now at 47, I'm living life. Uh, I gotta thank, you know, obviously my mom and dad, my family and friends. You know, they all thought I was absolutely insane for getting into Bitcoin mining. They, uh, they thought I was crazy to get into all this real estate. And I'm like, you know what, I'll show you. Well, I guess what I did, I showed them, right? With a little hard work. And now I'm here with you guys in the Caymans. 
with the ocean waves crashing behind me and everything is good. So that's my background, guys. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to touch on uh, my crypto uh, portfolio. Okay, so let's go through that quick. So on my portfolio, guys, I don't have like Partner One Trust. I don't have, you know, Transaurus on it. I don't have um, VSQ Capital. I don't have, you know, any of the high ROI percentage ones on there because it skews the numbers so bad. These are the ones that have made me money for a while now. And then I think are super, not, should, nothing is super safe. This is DeFi guys, right? Nothing is safe, right? But here's just a few of them. You know, I got some drip. I got, I got 10,000 drip now, you know, making me like 50 bucks a day or whatever it is. Fathom Finance, um, Aviate, that's trading bot, Secret Sauce, we can't talk about that. I'm in PGV, who knows what's happening there. Bruno X, Truth Seekers, I have a big bag of Truth Seekers. I got two seed NFTs, two presale. I've got the Alchemist NFTs, Hydro Whales, I'm a big fan of Sam. Got six of their NFTs, EMP Money. That's not that's been off peg, so it's not making me nothing. I've got seven institutional and three retail pre-send NFTs. And also I've got uh, you know Drew's uh, Wolf for Finance. I've got six of those NFTs, but now he made us KYC. I don't know what they're gonna be worth. I'm a little disappointed in that, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, you guys know I'm big into crypto program. I'm in corn market bull funds project 79 another sam project love it and novatech so just these i'm making about 400 bucks a day in daily income my bitcoin mining farm is about 345 dollars a day for 746 dollars a day right now there's about 150 dollars worth of electricity here for these bitcoin mining farms okay so it's about 200 bucks a day now, if you were to add up all the other protocols I'm in that are these higher, you know, ROI percentage ones, it's about this 400 bucks here would turn into about 900, right? Because I'm making about 500 bucks a day. So you say about 12 to 1300 dollars a day I'm making. So just with this now, the monthly income you're looking at about 22,000, you know, minus about three grand for electricity, so about 19.5, and yearly you're looking at about, you know. Minus electricity, you're looking at about two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year, right? That's without my other high, high yield investments happening, which are working right now. Great, I make ten percent, I make eight percent, I make three point seven seven percent, and I make four percent on like four different uh, protocols that I'm in, and it's been nothing short of amazing. That's about another four or five hundred bucks a day. So, you know, there are other things that are working so that's my crypto portfolio guys all right all right guys there it is now you know my background you know where i'm from you know how i grew up you know what i did for a living how i got to where i am you know i've got plenty of toys you know i've got this is not bragging guys okay this is not bragging like i said before if you guys are working in a factory for 20 bucks an hour this that's great all right this is great because the world needs people like that. So just kind of, uh, you know, don't take it as I'm, you know, bragging or anything like that. Just, you know, maybe not watch the video. It's just, I don't want to preach to you saying you should be doing something else. You don't need to. Some people don't need a lot of money and I don't either because I'm pretty frugal on most stuff. You know, I'm pretty frugal. I had to be frugal, like I said, because I ate shit for 15, 17 years, all right? Now I can spend. I've got a hundred thousand dollar Ram TRX. You know, I didn't need that. I got a 21 foot Ranger boat with a 300 horse motor on that I fish on. I got a five bedroom house on five acres out in the country. You know, I've got plenty of toys, quads and side by sides and whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I have. That's just material things. You know. Most of that stuff I bought because I needed a, I needed a tax write-off for my businesses, right? You know, they're all paid for, so whatever. It is what it is. All right, guys, so, you know, don't take this video the wrong way. It's not bragging. People want to ask me how I got here. This is how I got here. I worked my ass off for many, many years. 
now it's time to enjoy life. So, if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email. Hit me up in the Telegram group. I'll put the link in the description. Hey, how did you do this? What do you think of this? I'm an open book. I'll answer them. I don't care. I'll take the time. I have fun doing all this stuff. All right? So, email will be below. Link will be in the description for the for my Telegram group. Come join us there. Just remember, none of this is financial advice. If you need financial advice, go somewhere else. I'm not your guy. I'm just a dumb guy on YouTube documenting my journey for financial freedom through passive income. Nothing more, nothing less. All right? There is no referral links in this video. There is no nothing else. It's just a walkthrough of how I got here, what I'm doing, and how I'm living. All right? So, I'm going to go, go enjoy a nice evening, maybe have some dinner, maybe a couple cocktails. The bar is right next to me. The vodka cranberries are looking kind of good. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their Tuesday night. I hope you guys found some information in this video. Like I said, let me know if you need to help you with something. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you in the next one.